Next up, we have Shelly Rose Chervais. You probably know Shelly already. She's an amazing woman who has an incredible amount of, to offer us <clears throat> from the world of NLP, but applicable to business, applicable to relationships, applicable to so many things. That's one of the reasons she travels the world presenting this. And she just got back from traveling. she would be leaving in a day or two traveling again. So we're really happy to have her here. So with no further ado, here she is, Shelly Rose Survey. You are listening to the Essential Coaching Skills Podcast, a show devoted to uncovering the systems and the secrets that set the best apart, where you learn how to take your coaching clients to the next level while you grow the coaching practice of your dreams. So sit back and relax, or sit up and get excited. Either way, you might want to pay attention. This could be important. Hello, welcome back, Shelley Rochervé. So nice to see you, Doug. Nice to see you, and I understand you're operating on a bit of a time lag and rest deprivation, so uh, we'll keep this as quick as possible. Well, let's make it as enjoyable as possible. Okay, that too. That'll help with all that stuff, and I'm sure it'll make it more interesting for people watching and listening. Yeah. Very cool. So why don't you go ahead and just take over from here and tell us what you're going to do. So um, one of the things we talked about, Doug, is the fact that I do language and behavior profiles or thing, a, a tool based on the NLP meta programs. And you can do somebody's profile. And I think a lot of people haven't actually seen me do them. And this is what I'm known for and the, app, the various and sundry applications. So what I'd like to do is to do a lab profile with you in a specific context, because of course, this is a contextual based tool, our motivation triggers and our productivity mm. factors change based on the context. So uh, you said you would like to have a profile of yourself in the context of online marketing, because I'm not that good at it. I mean, I do it. Everyone who's an entrepreneur, solopreneur has to mm -hmm. wear multiple hats. But you know, I'm a I'm a really good therapist. I'm a really good uh, coach. I'm really good at lots of those things. And I have to do this as well, but I'm not that good at doing it. So we'll call online. this context in your work as an online marketer. Yeah. Is that, is that good? That's now, great. The, re the reason, I'm just a little side note for everybody watching here, is that when I'm asking the questions, I have to make sure we stay in the same context. So you're going to hear me repeat that context and th th those were the words exact words that Doug gave me so that's and you're comfortable with uh, asking questions in the context of you being an online marketer is that right yeah yeah, yeah. okay so what I'm going to do is do a lab profile and then I'm going to show you how I test because who knows I could be making this stuff up it could be my filters <laughs> listening to Doug and, and so we want to have a second go around where we test and this is a process I call guessing and testing so first of all I'm going to do the profile and we'll stop and uh, then we'll do the guessing and testing. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So I'm going to time how long the actual profile takes with my little phone here. And you're ready to start? I'm, I'm ready and re ready, ready and waiting. Ready All right, here we go. Ready. So in the context of you uh, being an online marketer, Doug, yep. what do you want? Like what's important? What are your goals with regards to that? What's important to you? I, I want to reach as many people as possible and um, get them to buy products of mine or services of mine. Okay, and get them to buy products and services. Yep. Any anything else mm. that's important to you in as an online marketer? Well, I'd like to maintain you know integrity. Mm hmm. Maintain and, integrity. Yeah. So I'm not promising something I don't deliver or vice. Versa. Right. Okay. Um, anything else? No, oh, that's it. Okay. I'm going to just take one of those for a moment and uh, delve um, a little bit deeper. Uh, when you say that what's important to you is to reach as many people as possible in your role as an online marketer, mm -hmm. why is that important to you in oh. online, as an online marketer? Well, mostly because um, I have sort of left doing private sessions alone. I'm just basically doing things online. And I realize it's a numbers game that the more 
you know, people that I can get out to. It's a world wide web. I think we currently got over 8 billion people out there. So I'd like to reach more than, you know, 10. Uh huh. So, um, and this may sound like a silly question. Why is that important to you in uh, your role as an online marketer? Um, it does sound like a silly question because it seems like the same question mm -hmm. over again. But um, it's important to me because I feel like the more people that I reach, the more customers I'll get from that reach. Okay, great. All right, thank you. So in your role as online marketer, how do you know you're doing a good job? How would you know or how do you know? Yeah. I think I, I know by the response I get. It's kind of like the NLP thing, mm -hmm. measured by the response I get. Um, the response you get? Mm -hmm. How does that show up? It shows up as numbers of people um, signing up for classes or uh, my coaching programs or my um, people downloads of the podcast. Okay, um, good. And why did you choose this work as an online marketer? Why did you choose it? Um, because I, I, I'm marketing what I do, which is NLP trainings, hypnosis trainings and, and coaching. So I, I need to, in order to have coach clients and you know sort of thing, I need to get the word out to people that I'm available. Okay, great, thank you. And when you think about uh, your work as an online marketer, what is the relationship between the way you're doing it this year and the way you did it last year? Hmm. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm attempting to be more strategic with um, n measuring and testing things as I do them, instead mm -hmm. of just thinking that it's probably going to be good and put it out there. I, I'm trying to, you know, be strategic and knowing specifically what I'm getting back. Anything else in terms of the relationship between I'm also getting that? other people to help. So I'm not hiring people to, you know, do some of the of the ad copywriting and things like that. Okay. And what's the relationship between what you were doing before and getting other people to uh, help? What do you mean by what's the relationship? Thank you. That's good. I'll explain later. Okay. <laughs> Stay tuned, folks. That was an indicator, and I'll explain it later. Um, uh, can you, in your experience uh, as an online marketer, can you uh, talk about an experience that caused you trouble or that was a challenge or something that was difficult in your role as an online marketer? Yeah, I mean, I I don't really know how to do Facebook advertising and other social media things. I, it's really just kind of a, a winging it and hoping for the best kind of thing when it comes to that. So I, I always feel kind of like I'm... Can you tell me about one particular situation where that happened? Yeah, because you're, you're telling me about a category of situations, but I'd like you to pick one. I was specifically going towards the specifics of Facebook advertising, but a specific Facebook advertisement, I would have to think back to. Um, yeah, one that caused you some difficulty. I think the most most recent one caused me some difficulty. There was um, the, the summit that you were involved in, the, um, making a lasting impact summit. We did some Facebook advertising for that, and I just really was never satisfied that I knew for sure this was working. So mm -hmm. it felt like I was just throwing, you know, money down a pit kind of thing. Right, right. And you and um, and how did you feel about that? I, bad. I didn't like that. Okay. Okay, great. I say great, but thank you for that. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> great. <laughs> yeah. No, that made you feel great. I know what you mean. I know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but let's come back to, uh, to something else. Um, okay. uh, when you talk about in your role as an online marketer, being able to reach as many people as possible, mm -hmm. um, can you talk about a situation where you were able to do something like that? Uh, well, I, yeah, again, the, the summit that we just, just did, there was, um, because there was a summit, Facebook ad aside, mm -hmm. um, we were able to get a lot of people to sign up for it. Um, so that did 
kind of what I was hoping to do, to reach a lot of people and have them actually attend the summit. And what did you like about that? It felt it felt satisfying, you know, to, to make the effort to attract people to this event and then have them come to the event and participate and enjoy it. OK, great. Thank you. Um, what was a, what would be a good way? I'm still thinking about you as an online marketer. What would be a good way for you to increase your success? Um, I think a good way for me to increase my success is to become more savvy about social media like Facebook advertising and other things that I'm missing, like Instagram and LinkedIn. I, I do nothing there at all. Okay. And uh, if you were talking or thinking about somebody else who was an online marketer, what would you recommend as a good way for them to increase their success? Um, I would, I would, well, in all seriousness, I would ask them to go do a lab profile with a shelter <laughs> survey, um, find out some more stuff about themselves. And um, it, it would really truly honestly depend on the person because there mm -hmm. are people who are at all different levels of online marketing, people who are just starting out and you know, making a website on Fiverr um, so that I'd be able to give them a lot of advice myself. But if they're um, already like in a level beyond where I am, then I would just help to you know, suggest that they find other people such as yourself who can give them you know, some feedback, some yeah, better feedback than what I can. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, how do you know that someone else is good at online marketing? Ah, that's a great question. Um, well, when it comes to somebody like um, Jeff Walker, I, I just see the large numbers that he's people that are in his pipeline that he's influencing. I see all the um, testimonials and videos from people that do that. I, I, I just hear and see lots of different uh, um, people saying so. Okay. How many times would you have to see large numbers in the and hear and see the testimonials and see what they're doing for you to be totally convinced that that person is good um, at online marketing? I'd say more than once, probably three times. Okay. Probably three times. Yeah. Great. Thank you. We're done. And that took nine minutes and six seconds. So I'll stop that. All right. Well, next time I'll go faster. No, um, if this is a piece of information. If this takes 15 minutes to get this far, one of the things it tells me is that the person is more detail oriented. Uh -huh. And because of the time it took to get through 13 questions was nine minutes, uh, you're more at an overview with regards to this context and, let, and less down in the details. Right. Yeah. Makes sense. So, so, uh, so what I'd like to do now is to test and give you feedback at the same time okay. uh, to see what we're doing. So I just want you to respond to uh, what I'm saying to you okay. uh, any way you want, okay? Yep. Um, and then I'll kind of explain to the audience what, what I've done and then explain about the cheat sheet that they can get where they can actually get a chance to do this for themselves as well. Sounds grand. So um, in the context of you as an online marketer, uh, I get the sense that you uh, think pretty hard about what you want to do. And you're not just jumping in and trying stuff. You're, you're thinking about some things before you uh, do them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's correct. OK, all right. And um, what's, what's motivating you, what's important to you in terms of what you're trying to achieve is you want to reach as many people as possible. Um, you want to get them to buy your products and services. And you want to maintain your integrity, not promising something that you don't deliver. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, I'm just yeah. checking that that was, I got uh, that right. Yeah. Um, and in, as an online marketer, you tend to be uh, focused on what you're trying to achieve and the benefits you're trying to get. And you're not thinking so much about uh, what might go wrong or what problems do I need to prevent. You're more focused on where you're going and what's happening. 
I'd, I'd say that's that's correct. I'm more focused on that. Not that the others don't enter into the conversation at all, but it's I'm certainly more focused on the former than the latter. Okay. And when you're working as an online marketer, you're not uh, you're not judging for yourself so much about is this good is this bad. It's the results that tell you. And when you get results uh, that are either good or bad, it influences what you do. Yes, sort of. I mean, there I do read it over and listen to it and feel you know get the feel of how I respond to it, and that is actually probably the the bigger thing. And then I, I judge whether I was right or not by the results that I get. Okay, but you're the person that judges. Yeah. So if you felt you'd done something well, but the results didn't show up, you kind of feel you were right. No, I would feel like there's something missing that I need to adjust um, my evaluation strategy. So if the results contradicted your own judgment, you would go with the results? Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Okay. I'll come back to that in a few minutes. Um, and as an online marketer, uh, you like to consider different possibilities of how you do that and why you do that um, more than just following a procedure. Mm -hmm. Yep. And uh... OK, well, we're back from that power outage. The Internet went out there for a few minutes, but uh, it's like, it's like, yeah, where did where is the Internet? I mean, <laughs> it's it's out. It went out. <laughs> Without now it's back. Okay. So, <laughs> so, so hopefully so it will stay. Uh, shall we? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Please. So we we are in the middle of uh, me giving uh, using language to test the lab profile where we were, and I'm on now to uh, reason options and procedures. So um, I'm looking at what I scored you as uh, before the outage. We're going to go B O and. AO before the outage and after the outage. Don't call me an AO. Yeah. So you remember we were talking about um, your work as an online marketer. Yes. And uh, I think I actually said this while we were being cut off. I think I said um, one of the things that uh, uh, is motivating for you or one of the ways that you think in terms of being an online marketer is you like to have lots of uh, choices and alternatives, and you're not so uh, motivated by following every detailed procedure and finishing every little thing that you start. You have a tendency to, to start something and then try something else as an online marketer in that context. Yeah, no, I don't think that's me. Um, I, like as an example, I started doing the Jeff Walker um launch thing about four mm -hmm. years ago and i'm still still trying to get that right uh, but do, are you scheduling and completing all the processes involved in the jeff walker process um if i'm not then i'm hiring somebody else to do it um so yeah so, yeah here's my here's my sense of, of just based on on your answers is that at the beginning of the Jeff Walker process, you're totally committed to it, but it's hard work. And chances are you get distracted by some of the other things that you gotta do as an online marketer, because there's mm -hmm. lots to do. And uh, it's hard to keep to that schedule and keep following those step-by-step -step processes. Would that be more accurate? Yeah, I think, I think there's, um, I have a tendency to, to leave out some de details. Yeah. Until things get a little um, <clears throat> less than perfectly done, let's just say. So and and so this is so what I uh, I marked you as is in the context of being an online marketer, I marked you as more options and procedures and much more. Options is when someone is motivated to try things out, to have a lot of variety, to have choices. And they tend to be demotivated by following step-by-step -step procedures. And, and they're not motivated to complete everything. So even though you're motivated to 
when you start something, it's yeah. very easy to get distracted. And that this may be one of the difficulties with um, uh, online marketing that you've been facing, because in order to be really good at it, you don't have to reinvent procedures. There's like tons of procedures out there that would work perfectly well if there's if they're matched to your audience. Uh -huh. And basically, all you have to do is follow those procedures. But somebody with your uh, tendencies in this context would get very easily distracted onto other things because following a procedure is not that motivating. In fact, oh. you know, it's like when I was a student, I'd rather clean my oven than study for exams. You know, I mean, I'd find almost anything else to do. So it, it's a bit like that. And so it takes a great deal of self-discipline and willpower to make yourself do that. And one of the things you just said is, you know, I leave some stuff out, you know, it's like if you're an options chef and you decide to follow a recipe, right? In the context of cooking, if you have an options pattern, you start to follow the recipe, but then you start to make substitutions. You get mm -hmm. creative. There you go. Um, for some things, that's a disadvantage. Whereas for other things, it's great for problem solving, finding your way around issues, but some things just have to be done in the way they need to be done. And that's not the thing that's motivating you about. Okay. Work. No, that's, that's fair. That's fair. I think I, I I just finished cooking dinner a while back. <clears throat> Excuse me. That is kind of exactly how I, I approach a recipe is that it's like, yeah, this is good. I'll try this. How about some of this? This might be good in there too. Yeah. And, and if somebody asks you, how'd you do that? Uh, you go, ah. <laughs> that's right. So that's a different context. And one of the things we know about these patterns is it's not about you as a person. It's about you and how you interact with a different context. So mm, mm. also have this pattern, at least uh, from, from what we can see in the context of cooking. But, you know, you, you asked for feedback about you as an online marketer. One mm -hmm. of the things that would be important is to get someone that you work to work with who is very procedural. And when someone's procedural, they need to finish what they start. Mm -hmm. and they need a step-by-step -step method. Now, if they're very procedural and the procedure doesn't work, they're not good at fixing it. So you don't want somebody who's that rigid. You want someone who can follow a procedure, but has enough options to think about stuff that's not working, but still be driven to complete what they start. Got it. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes good sense. Yeah. And um, the next pattern that we looked at is what's called decision factors. And uh, from your answers, uh, this is all about how long do you like to be doing the same kind of thing? Mm -hmm. And you have a mixture of a pattern. So you have... Um, the five to seven year evolutionary pattern. So you're happy to be doing what you're doing for about five to seven years with gradual improvements and change. And then about every five to seven years, you want something new, but you have a double pattern. So you also like change in that uh, if you're not doing something new every year, year and a half, you tend to get bored. So you need to both get the feeling that you're evolving and growing and developing, but also, you know, there's something new and different happening hmm. in the context of an online marketer, because that's what we tested. I don't know yeah. about the rest of your life, but in the context of uh, being an online marketer. Very tricky thing to say, because I have, I don't know how many five, to seven year periods I've been an online marketer. You know, I can't say it's been the same pattern for like five of those, because I haven't been online marketing that long. Mm -hmm. um, and I will say that in marketing in general, yeah, I can see that. Yeah, I can. I can see that pattern. If, you're looking, if you don't throw out the baby with the bathwater every year. Right? No, I don't. Right. And, and what you're looking for is how to get better at it, mainly. But it, you also need a bit more spice. You got to find some different things to add into. Yeah, it. yeah, yeah. Like, like we recently did a summit. Like now we're doing a summit, actually. Yeah. <laughs> this is part of a fundraising summit. And I had never done summits until recently, but it seemed to be a, a thing I could fairly easily add in to the five to seven year idea of yeah, building. And, a and that's what your language shows. And what we're looking at is the, your use of comparisons versus distinctions. And so in the context of this question, you yeah. know, what's the relationship between the way you're doing online marketing this year uh, uh, and last year, what's the relationship between how you're doing it? You used a lot of comparisons and then 
couple of distinctions, like new and different. Comparisons mm -hmm. are more, bigger, smaller, better, worse, any word you can put on a sliding scale. And that's the five to seven year pattern. Whereas when you say, well, trying something new or I made a shift, that's that difference pattern. And so I was just counting uh, the number of those kinds of phrases and, and words to really? come up with what I did. Yeah. Really? Wow. Yeah. Is there an app for that? Can you uh, put that into like an AI program? And well, hey, listen, we have an app. It's called Libretta, L-I-B-R-E-T-T-A. And it analyzes uh, uh, three sets of meta programs in text, in email. It does toward and away from internal, external and options of procedures. Wow. We're now talking with somebody because we've got a partner who might like to invest in this. We're going through all the due diligence and then we can add on new patterns. And with all the new AI and computational linguistics today, it's much easier. When I first developed this, I had to actually analyze thousands, thousands of emails, coding them. And Yourself. now it's much more automatic. So uh, this could happen. This could happen. So, so that thing that you just described, that mm -hmm. makes you an options person, I'm guessing. Um, I have both patterns, but it depends on what context. Okay. So in the context of being a software developer or working with software developers, I tend to be a bit more procedural. Like I get a vision about something, usually in conversation with people. You uh -huh. know, I get my best ideas either on the toilet or in conversation. You know, it's something about letting go. Is that too much information? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or in conversation. So I get an options idea, but then I'm fairly step by step. Okay, what's the next step? What's the next step? Let's keep going. Yeah. Wow. And I think for me, in some of my projects, that explains uh, the success is that you got to keep driving to the next step and not let yourself get distracted. And in fact, here's a tip. Um, there's lots of people out there with great ideas and I get lots of them coming to me and say, Shelly, do you want to work with me on this great idea? And I listen to the idea and it's often a fantastic idea, but I don't want to get into bed metaphorically with metaphorically with uh, uh, people who have too high of an options pattern in the context of doing a project. Why? They're totally motivated by the project until they get totally motivated by something else. Yeah, I yeah. want people that are driven to complete. So what I do to find out and to do it's a little test, I say, well, that's interesting. I can't commit right now, but would you put together a one pager inter, uh, that says what the project is, what resources it's going to take, what are the steps and what are the time frame you prefer? Just an overview of that. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Most of the time they never come back. Hmm. The task was to complete a procedure. Right, right, right. And they can't do it. And then I go, well, I don't have to say no. And I don't have to, you know, so that's a test for me. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. I want to work with people who are driven to complete the things they start rather than, oh, I got this great idea. Now yeah. I have another great idea. Right? Yeah. 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 So cool. So those are the motivation traits. I've also done the working traits. Would you like to uh, have a sense of what I picked up from that? No, I, I don't feel any drive to complete this. You're not feeling drive at all. You have a mainly general kind of stuff. I'm going to give it to you anyway, Dolly. <laughs> Uh, you have a mainly general pattern with regards to online marketing. You do not like the details. If you have to deal with the details for a short period of time, you'll do it. Yep. But it ain't your favorite thing to do. No, it is not. Not by a long shot. Nope. Okay. And that, again, was both in the length of time it took to do the interview and the structure of your answers. Because the interview got done pretty quickly. Yes. Somebody who has more of a, what we call a specific pattern is more detail oriented. That interview can take 15 to 20 minutes and, and you took nine minutes and six seconds. Wow. Right. Um, and we all know people like that. I mean, there are some contexts in which I'm very specific and people go, ah, oh, get to the point. Right. You know, and, and vice versa. Um, we then looked at uh, what is called attention direction, self and other. Mm -hmm. Someone with a self pattern um, doesn't tend to display nonverbals. They look pretty much like a computer and they're not good at picking up other people's nonverbals. Mm. When Roger Bailey originally developed this and the research was not scientific by any means. Um, from his numbers that he was running, about 7% of the population have a self pattern, which means they're not very good at picking up all of the nonverbal aspects of communication. They tend to focus on the content. 
And so there's the self pattern and the other pattern. And you had the other pattern. That means you respond to nonverbals. And one of the ways we test it, like if I'm doing an interview with somebody in person, I might accidentally uh, drop my pen. Does the person pick it up? Or they just kind of look at your pen? Like, and when I do it online, I might cough or sneeze or something. Does the person instantly automatically like a reflex respond? If I make a face, do you respond? Like, do you nod when I say something? Those right. are all indicators of the other pattern, gotcha. whereas you wouldn't necessarily see that with the self pattern. Interesting. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, I've become to believe, too, that when you're looking at the autism spectrum, mm -hmm. uh, who have a self pattern are kind of at the low end of the autism spectrum because they've right. not they don't pick up clues. Right. I was actually thinking that as you were describing. Yeah. Them. Yeah. And I don't have any research to prove that, like there hasn't been any research to prove that the lab profile self pattern overlaps with that, but uh -huh. it makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah, for sure. So, so if somebody's looking for a, a thesis to work on and they're interested in that, let me know. Yeah. Yes. Just have to complete this one project. So we That's can... all you got to do. Give me a one pager. <laughs> <laughs> so then we look at stress response and there's three patterns, uh, feelings, choice, and thinking. When someone has a feelings pattern um, in a stressful situation within the context, so it's a subcontext of a context, right? So we were looking at you as an internet marketer, and the question I asked you, can you tell me about a situation uh, as an internet marketer that caused you trouble? And what we're looking for is someone who has a feelings pattern will shift into uh, perhaps a negative emotional state and then stay there a long time and have a hard time dragging them out. And we use our NLP, all of our, what we call calibration or observation skills to see the shift. And what we're looking for, do they shift back into how they were speaking before? Mm -hmm. If they do that shift back, they have a choice pattern, which means they, they go into a negative state, but they have choice to come out of it. And then the third pattern is thinking which means under the normal levels of, of stressful things that can happen, not major life dramas, but the normal stressful things in that context, they don't tend to have uh, an emotional response. So there's feelings, choice, and thinking. And where I put you is two points, choice, and a little bit of feeling. So that, in other words, when something, um, and I can't remember the example that you gave me, but you uh, talked about a situation that was problematic. And I asked you, can you Tell us about, uh, tell me about a specific time when that happened. And it obviously bothered you. And it took a little while before you went back and started talking about uh, the way you were. And my memory is you even moved your body. Like you went way over here. Hmm. You were over here for a while and your face looked very different. And then eventually you came back. So you have a choice. And this is one of the wonderful things about NLP is that you know, when you take NLP and you teach NLP and you use it for yourself, uh, you have the ability to have more choice about mm -hmm. your feelings, about yeah. your emotions, right? Yeah, I agree completely. How does that sound? Uh, in terms oh, that, of that fits. That fits really well. Yeah. 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 Then we looked at your environment and what you need in your environment to be productive. And in terms of your environment, there's three kinds of environments, being alone, being in proximity with others with clearly defined roles or being all together, synchronicity and nobody's, it's not no role to find, we're all in it together. And at work, people tend to develop one or two of these patterns. Um, and if they're out of their comfort zone, their productivity uh, tends to suffer. So the one where I'm productive when I'm alone is called independent. Proximity is the one where I like to work with other people, provided that our roles are clear. So you're, if you're interviewing me, that's a proximity task. You're the interviewer. I'm the interviewee. If you're a coach, you're the coacher. I'm the coachee, things like that. Yeah. And then the third one is called cooperative. We're all in it together. And you have a mixture of, pro of proximity and cooperative in the context of being an internet marketer. This means that you are more productive if you're working in conjunction with someone else. Okay, interesting. And that if you have to spend an awful long time doing everything by yourself, you'll become less productive over time because it's not your strong suit. That makes sense. Does, does that sound right? Yeah. Do you have an example of that from uh, in terms of your work as an internet marketer? Do I have an example of that? Well, just simply that, you know, when I first, going back to the Jeff Walker launch idea, when I first 
did that. I listened to his um, uh, webinar about it. I had his book, I joined the club, and then I just, you know, figured these things out. I filmed some videos by myself and, and, and did this launch by myself. And um, it was okay. It was, uh, it was good. It was, it was okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm exaggerating here. No, I understand. Yeah, absolutely. But, um, yeah, but then I did it with you know somebody who could handle the details and follow those different things and and bounce things off and it was just you know much better that's the second time. And, and you know it's really this is an important pattern to know yourself on. Like so, for example, I would love to go to the library or a cafe and write and create and uh, design a, a presentation or a training. Uh, I like the environment where there's lots of people around making noise because I'm a bit of an extrovert, but yeah. don't talk to me. If you talk to me, like I lose my train of thought. So yeah. in those contexts, I'm very independent. Like don't bug me. But this kind of thing, it's very difficult for me to stand and, and rehearse a presentation by myself because I need an audience to work with. Right. So that when you and I have a conversation or an interview like this, I feel that uh, I can, my brilliance can come out. Mm. There's this interaction and this exchange and this energy. Yeah. Whereas when I've done work uh, with filming and there's somebody hiding behind the camera and I'm just talking to the camera, I feel the energy completely drain out of my body. And in fact, we've actually put pictures of people up that I can talk to. <laughs> well, that's interesting. You know, I've noticed when I do coaching, when I do classes, teaching classes, I, I, come alive in a way that I don't when I'm just one on one. That is the proximity pattern. That's exactly it. And you know, if you're doing office design, and you have lots of people around, you need to figure out who, like what of these patterns will make the people the most productive. Mm. If you've got a bunch of coders, you need cubicles where they can be all by themselves. Because you don't want coders being interrupted by, hey, have you got a pencil? Like you don't want that. Yeah. Whereas if you, uh, the job is talking to customers, you want people who are motivated and are productive when they're in communication with others. Well, then you want cubicles that are lower so that they can at least be in contact with their colleagues as well as their customers, yeah, right? Really cool. So even uh, office design can be either independent, cooperative, or uh, proximity. You know, they made, uh, they do all these experiments, you know, with the virtual office where, you, where everybody's there together and you have to sign out an office. Well, you know, only 20% of the population have that cooperative pattern where they don't need their own territory. So it, it's a big productivity mistake to design a whole place like that. Yeah. yeah. And some whole businesses, not just the we work type things, but whole businesses that are that way. You know, and it's like, I, I can't imagine getting work done in a situation like that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and absolutely. It, it's, it, it depends on what kind of work you're doing. Like I, I have a great capacity of ignoring other people, but I don't want anybody to talking to me i like the noise but don't talk to me like yeah, if yeah. i'm trying to get something done right hmm. um and then so we, then we're looking at like what do you pay attention to uh in the context uh that we're measuring so in the context of being an internet marketer are you paying attention to people and relationships or are you paying attention to methodologies ideas objects things so we're looking at person versus thing mm -hmm. and um that was an answer to i asked you a question about um uh, something that you liked about internet marketing one of your criteria and then i asked you what do you like about it and what i'm listening for is do you talk about the experience that you had or that someone else had how it felt what it was like or do you talk about the results and what happened what things happened and you talked about the experience. Hmm. So it's very, in this context, it's very person oriented. Now, in the context of internet marketing, I would suggest add a bit more thing orientation. Uh, in my experience as a trainer, when you're doing sales training, if you have uh, salespeople, and marketing is a bit like sales, who are very person oriented and don't have at least a piece of thing orientation, they get very attached to their prospects and customers and they feel terrible if somebody says no. Hmm. And, it, it, and they have a hard time closing because they feel bad. Like they don't want to push the other person. It's all about the relationship. Well, of course it's all about the relationship, but you have a job to do the job, the thing. And so if you add a bit more, results orientation and i'm not saying you don't have it 
But if you add a bit more, that is was going to will help you focus on actually uh, getting to the point where you get the kind of results that you want. That'll cool. help. Cool. That's great. That's really useful. Cool. So there's just two more pieces left. One is rule structure. Uh -huh. uh, what rules do you follow for yourself? And what rules do you kind of impose on other people? Uh -huh. and Roger Bailey, when he developed the language and behavior profile, uh, determined that about 75% have my mind. That means my rules for me, my rules for you. That's when you could say to another person, if I were you, I would. Whereas we all know that if you were that other person, you would have done what they did because you would have been them, right? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so, and you have the, the my, my with a little bit of my, your. And um, my, your, it's very interesting to me. My, your is my rules for me, your rules for you. So why would I tell someone else what to do? I mean, everybody's different. And NLP, because it teaches that you have a model of the world and other people have a model of the world, yeah. kind of teaches what Roger calls the my, your rule structure. So you also had some of that answer. But the main answer was my rules for me, my rules for you. Here's what I would do. If you were in this phase, because you said it depends. If they're in this phase, I would recommend that. If they're in this phase, I'd recommend that. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, it's up to somebody. So it was like mainly uh, my, my with some my, your. There's a couple other patterns in there, in there, but you didn't have those. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And then the last piece is what, uh, what, how, how do you get convinced uh, in your role as an online online marketer? And there's two phases in, in getting convinced about something. Well, you gather some information, and then <clears throat> something has to happen in your head, and you get convinced. And you like to see and hear, mainly see evidence and hear a little bit. And three times, if you get that evidence three times, you'll be pretty convinced, which is, in fact, the most frequent pattern. Um, this is why we say once is an incident, twice is a coincidence, and three times is a pattern. It's because there, more than 50% of the people have a number of examples, three. You know, And this was really useful to me when I learned this, because when I first learned this thing, I was really upset because I always thought I was a very logical person. And if I were convinced about something, it's because I had reason to be. Well, it turns out I have here a number of examples too. So if I've heard something twice, I go, oh, gee, that's funny. Or, you know, and so it has made me a better coach because it's very easy to be uh, convinced that somebody is the way they are or they do this the way they do. And when I sense myself becoming convinced, I go, well, I must have had my two examples. Let's go look for a counterexample. Uh -huh. So that's helped me be more rigorous, in fact. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes total sense. Yeah. So those are the things that um, uh, I discovered. And uh, for our audience, I just wanted to say, and, and thank you for helping me verify and change some of the things, is that uh, <clears throat> a, a gift I have for you is the Lab Profile Cheat Sheet, which gives you all the questions and the indicators. And uh, Doug has a link to this that I'm sure you'll put up. I don't remember what the link is, but you've got the link. And on that link is a video showing you how to use the uh, cheat sheet, explaining the lab profile, and you can download it. And it's uh, questions and answers. And uh, I often give these to my students as a laminated little card so they don't have to remember everything and the questions are all there. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you. And thank you everybody for listening. And, and Shelly, I know that you've been jet lagged and this has been a real, um, Heavy lifting for you, so really do appreciate it. And you're off again someplace else in just a couple of days. I am leaving a day after tomorrow for the Canadian Association of Professional Speakers annual wow. convention. And I get to wear disguises and costumes for this, so I'm just <laughs> yeah. Great. Well, thank you. Thank you for being here. My pleasure. This has been the Essential Coaching Skills Podcast. Thank you for being here. It's a pleasure seeing you again. Hope to see you again real soon. Come back next week when we have another gripping and exciting episode of the Essential Coaching Skills Podcast. And if you want to, you can find out more about us, each and every one of us, at EssentialCoachingSkills.com. Thanks. Thanks.